My name is Samir Mardini. I'm one of the reconstructive surgeons here at Mayo Clinic, uh, focusing a lot on facial reconstruction. Uh, at Mayo Clinic, now we, we see a lot of patients with facial deformities uh, for a variety of reasons, ones that have happened more recently or, or long-term deformities. And uh, those are candidates for uh, reconstruction uh, of the face uh, with a variety of our tools, such as reconstructive microsurgery or uh, craniofacial uh, surgery where we do a lot of the bony work. Um, and these pa the patients that we're evaluating now where we uh, were able to offer them uh, these types of reconstructions are eventually going to be hopefully candidates for face transplantation. Uh, now these are patients uh, that um, will be with a severe deformity and have a lot of specific uh, criteria that make them candidates for this procedure, but uh, we are looking to offer this to patients eventually. Reconstructing complex deformities is is a, a challenge. Uh, a challenge meaning that it requires the skill set to do these reconstructions, but also a team. And the team here at Mayo Clinic, the, the, the ability to assemble a team to work on um, these patients is very unique here at Mayo Clinic. And I think uh, we can offer uh, a, a good group of, uh, of uh, physicians, physical therapists, nurses, uh, psychologists, uh, prosthetic specialists, um, oral surgeons, um, everything, all specialties that are required to complete the reconstruction, we are able to do this here in a very coordinated fashion. Uh, and we have a lot of experience working with each other. Um, and this can take us to, can take a patient that has a mild to moderate, even severe deformity and bring them as close as they, as we can to, um, to a more normal looking face. Our, our craniofacial uh, team here at Mayo Clinic is a, uh, also a, a great example of our ability to, to work in, uh, in a team and, and uh, uh, coordinate the care to, to get patients up to, to the point where they're close to normal. And, and uh, we are seeing a lot of patients with uh, congenital deformities, again, the children, and also adults with, with deformities that they were uh, born with. And uh, they see, they're able to see our uh, speech pathologists, our, um, our geneticists, our, uh, our reconstructive surgeons, and, and we're able to um, um, bring these patients from a point where they are suffering from functional and aesthetic uh, issues and trying to get them to the point where they're able to be normal in society and and uh, feel like they 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 look pretty reasonable and are able to do normal things. So we're we're talking about patients with deformities in all parts of the face. So either a nasal deformity, orbital deformity, cheek deformity, forehead uh, forehead problems, uh, even even things related to the to the neck area. Um, those are patients that that we can do a lot of things to kind of get them as close to normal as possible and. And we're talking about patients who have had their deformity for many, many years, or patients who just recently had their uh, their problems. And we, we have we have a lot of uh, tools that we can use, uh, and a lot of advanced techniques that that can take these patients from where they are today, maybe in a pretty bad situation, and hopefully get them closer to normal. We are we are talking about patients with uh, deformities of the face, where not only are they uh, aesthetically uh, affected by this, but also functionally affected. So someone with uh, uh, perioral, meaning uh, issues around the mouth, for example, maybe drooling. Uh, patients who have uh, an injury on the face where they can't smile, we can also work on correcting their smile and actually creating a smile by transferring muscles from one part of the body to the, to the other. Um, um, or patients who have issues with their vision. Uh, we are are able to work around the bony orbit uh, and and create a a, um, a orbital reconstruction that will support uh, the vision. Now, if patients have visual problems, now, uh, these are issues that our ophthalmology colleagues can evaluate and and possibly treat. Um, and of course, the the nasal deformities often have uh, breathing problems associated that that sometimes can be corrected. So we're talking about patients that either have mild to moderate deformities or really severe deformities, some, some even affecting their uh, ability to communicate with people and go outside and be normal. And, uh, and along these lines, we're talking about even children uh, who have cleft lip deformities and, um, and clefts where their, their fusion hasn't happened and they have uh, clefts uh, somewhere around their face uh, or even deformed faces from either congenital or from 
um, other trauma related or um, or tumor related or, or things like that we are we are able to do a lot to get them to the place they want to be and uh, if we think that they're uh, not able to get there with conventional tools and and when our program is started uh, with the obeyed uh, transplant program um, we are hoping that we can offer face transplantation to those patients that are candidates for it